COVID-19 has halted the economy. Unemployment numbers have skyrocketed in the midst of this global pandemic while workers have lost income, employers have lost their businesses, and folks across the board are unable to pay for what is most Americans' largest recurring expense, housing. I spoke with... Yes, it's Becky Gligo, and I'm the Housing Policy Director for the City of Tulsa. To provide a guide through staying home and keeping it through COVID-19. Right. So for tenants, the first thing I will say is we have an exceptional housing authority. So if anybody is currently in public housing, they have not been asked to pay rent in March or April. And that's not something that they're going to have to go and pay back. They're just getting rent relief, which is exceptional. For Section 8, you still do have to pay your private landlord, but eviction courts are closed currently through May 18th. Um, which means that no evictions can be enforced, no matter what your landlord says. If they're for um, non-payment or otherwise, you get to stay. But I know that that feels scary to people because what happens when those courts do reopen if you're still not in a position to pay? Gligo advises anyone intimidated by the process of negotiating rent with their landlord to call 211 to get free mediation services, wherein a third party helps renters and landlords come to an agreement through these unusual circumstances. Legal aid and Still She Rises can also help if threats of eviction during the pandemic are raised. Guidelines are in place for landlords as well. A moratorium for filing evictions is in place until July 25th, making the process of carrying out an eviction illegal until then. If you have a landlord who has a mortgage who is backed by the federal government, so that's a Fannie Mae mortgage, a Freddie Mac mortgage, an FHA, a VA, or a low-income housing tax credit mortgage. You want to ask your landlord if that's the kind of mortgage they have. Um, There are some groups working on compiling that information into a public database as well. If they don't know, if you would talk to your landlord and they're like, actually, I don't know, their mortgage um, servicer is required by law to tell them. So you can get to the bottom of that. And that's a lot of our mortgages, right? Like there's a lot of people who have federally insured mortgages that cannot evict until really August at the earliest. First thing, if you're a landlord, check to see if you're one of those federally backed mortgages. Because if you are, then you automatically have some relief and up to a year of mortgage forbearance, where you can probably work something out with your tenant until they can get rebounded and they they can pay you back, or maybe they're waiting. A lot of people I know are just simply waiting for their unemployment to come, and then they'll be able to catch up. But, you know, it's, it's hard to file right now. It takes a while. And while Americans wait for stimulus checks and unemployment benefits to come through, Gligo sees the city of Tulsa using federal COVID-19 relief funds to assist and alleviate housing cost needs. They also hope to host webinars to help citizens unpack federal relief legislation and how to access those funds for relief. So there's some time that we're buying, but that's not going to solve this, right? Because time doesn't relieve the burden. And so I will tell you that the city is working on how we can use some of the federal funds that we're going to get for COVID relief for a rent relief fund, and the United Ways fund is going to have some rental components as well. One of the things we're figuring out is sort of what are the logistics to make sure that people can get those payments, but there is relief coming. There's also, we're going to do a webinar likely in the next couple of weeks with landlords, attorneys, and landlord experts about what the CARE Act means for them and sources of funding that they may be able to apply for to help with their mortgage or to give their tenants some relief. So we do have an informational session coming up on that. What we're doing right now is really pouring through that giant piece of legislation to to make sure we're not missing anything and make sure that we know exactly where those dollars can go. I also asked how Gligo sees the future of housing issues being faced after the crisis and what kind of city she hopes to see on the other side. I mean... I think now more than ever, we're seeing the case for um, affordable housing. I think that people are going to want to be able to walk easily to the things that they need and and the essential trips that they have. Um, And so I'm hoping that what this does is force away some of the stigma that we've had around different housing types, around affordability. I think when, when the need becomes so great, 
that folks who've never relied on government assistance before are going to need to for the first time. I, I'm really hopeful that that changes our conversation about what our cities can look like in terms of diversity of income, diversity of housing typology, um, and just sort of diversity of lived experience. Maybe that's overly optimistic, but that's one thing that I'm hoping comes out of this. Um, and, you know, the, the federal government has made clear to us that we're going to have resources that we wouldn't have had even two months ago to put towards things like housing and rent assistance. And so there is a bright side to that. For Focus Black Oklahoma, I'm Colby Webster.